I'm sorry about that, guys. I hit the wrong button. What I was saying, though, this idea of walking in somewhere and making an absurd amount of money when, honestly, you're not even showing the vague amount of interest in learning anything about it. It's just not the way the world works. Now, I know some people will be like, oh, this old guy, blah, blah, blah. But think about it in your daily job. If I walked in to say, let's say you're a barista at Starbucks, and I walk in here, what we're going to do right here, guys, sorry about that, is uh, we're just going to kind of clean this stuff up a little bit with some sandpaper. But let's just say I walked in there with no experience, and you've been the head barista for, I don't know, a year, two months, six months, whatever, and you're making $20 an hour. Well, I walk in the door... And say, you know what? I'm not doing this job unless I am making, uh, I don't know, $25 an hour. I'm just going to refuse. I'm not going to do it. You know, blah, blah, blah. How would you feel about that? You've been there. You've been busting your rump. And I agree to an extent that corporations are not paying what they should. I think a lot of companies could pay better. But in the same sense, they're there to make money, and you also have to put in the effort. Now, if you look back here, you'll see this is bad shape. So we're going to have to clean this up. So we're making sure we get good contact. I think that's a majority of my problem here. Again, we're not trying to dig the china. If I had a round piece, what I would do, let's see if I can do that, is do this. This is not going to be easy. Like I said, I'm just trying to get this thing cleaned up and praying that I can save myself some money. Because I don't want to have to replace that starter unless I absolutely have to. But, like I said, guys, when you start a job or you're going in there to try to start a job, do your best. It doesn't matter. And I think that's a, a problem, a generational problem, is a lot of us in my generation were raised to understand it doesn't matter if you're a bartender, you're a barista, you're a janitor. Do the best you can. Do the best job you are physically capable of doing. And take pride in what you do. Now, it may be a little difficult to take pride in making coffee or things like that, but you're not always going to be there. And what you want from that job is a good, a, a good reference. Think about it like that. What you want is the best reference you can get. So that way, when you move to another area or another job, and they call, they say, yeah, uh, Mandy or Scott or whoever worked here, and they were always on time. They did everything they were asked. That goes a long way with future employers. Believe it or not. And, you know, when you work one of those jobs, your co-workers are there, I found it's better to try to keep your opinions to yourself. Go in, do the job, don't complain about the job, just do it and be done with it. You're not going to always be there. I'm really getting some concern over this starter. And you can see there's some major pitting here. I think if this cleaning doesn't work, I'm going to end up replacing it. I really hope not. But the problem, like getting the starter rebuilt, there isn't much you can do about this pitting. About the only thing you can really do is replace it. And, uh, like I said, I hope this works. But this is all you can do. Try your best. Now, some people may be saying, why don't you just replace it? Well, because that's $150, $200 that I could put somewhere else. For an hour of my time cleaning up this starter, 
I wish I had a lathe. I can save myself a lot of money. And that money would translate into more Warhammer. That's the reason I do stuff like this. Is it aggravating? Yeah. Does it take up my day? Sure. But, might be another box set. I mean, $143 or $243. With Christmas time coming, you know they do, do the box sets. So, that's more money for me. And it makes my wife happy that I saved some money. Uh, if this works, this cleanup, all it really cost me was about $20. So, 20 versus 250 sure, that's a great amount of savings. But like I said, I've got some major concerns over the pitting on this. Um, if this doesn't work, like I said, I'm going to end up replacing it. So that's a lot of pitting. That messes with your contacts. I'm hoping if I, I might have to end up getting a Dremel, because this cleanup's not going like I want it to. But we'll get it done one way or the other. Now, if you have to end up having to order one of these, you just go to your local Napa, look for the old guy with the book, and he'll be able to cross-reference what you need. One thing I don't like about it is you have to turn in the old one for a core charge. Because sometimes what you'll find is the outer housing, the front part here, outer housing, will not fit. But, and I ran this with a lawnmower. The outer housing of the starter worked just fine with the old parts. And sometimes you've got to kind of mix and match. Uh, if you don't have the old one, well, you don't have the old one. Let's see if I can clean this up and I'll come back. Now I just got done sanding this and uh, hitting it with some of this degreaser. And it looks a lot better than what it did. But as I said a few times here, these are the bolts that actually came out of it, holding it together. That pitting worries me. Even if this does work, this is something I'm going to have to keep in mind. Because uh, you can't squeeze the turnip for so long and you get nothing but turnip juice. You're sure not going to get blood out of it. But, you just kind of clean it. There we go. Until it gets where you find it acceptable. Now, don't be in a rush. Don't. Just take your time. Now, normally you wouldn't want to go in this direction. But, with as heavily damaged as it is... You may have to do that to really get in there. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. As you can see, I hit it with a little bit of this degreaser, and it looks better already. Now, at some point in time, you have to understand something. You're not going to smooth all this out. That's just the way it is. If you have a wire brush, you might could get in there and get this pitting cleaned up a little bit better. But, it's hard to say, fellas. Hard to say. Go ahead, ladies. Because believe me, there are some lady mechanics out there, and they're good. There's one particular lady I like watching on YouTube. Uh, she does a lot of stuff with lathes. Something I've been really interested in here lately. Um, basically, we bought this farm, and it may end up helping us. This uh, main part of the coil here, you're not really wanting to scan it per se. You're just trying to clean it up. Some of these burnt marks, if you can clean those up, it'll look a little bit better. Again, you're not trying to beat it to death or anything like that. Just a lot of sanding, clean it up. What this copper color here is an anti corrosion. Uh, this one's so old that, I mean, it is what it is. 
right, we're just trying to clean it up, get it back to where it needs to be. And I apologize for not merging these two videos together. I'm just not at that point with my skills yet. And you know what? I'm fine with that. Okay, guys. I'm going to see if I can find my wire brush. Alright, guys. What I had to do was be quiet about this. I had to run into the house and steal a steel wool pad from my wife. Uh, I ran in there real, real quick, and uh, where she was washing dishes, she walked off, and I grabbed this one. So she might come out hollering at me in a minute. I mean, you know, you do what you got to do. But I want to take this and just see if I can do any better. I can't seem to find my steel wool, my, excuse me, my metal brush. I'm wondering if it's in the back of the four-wheel. But sometimes, I'll use the four-wheeler to take tools back and forth from the back. And, of course, I'm probably going to spill everything everywhere. And, you know, let's see what we got. That's all right. We'll just keep going with this. Now, this is all enough of the patience. And again, I'm doing it the wrong way, and I know I am. But I just want to try to get that pitting the best I can. Honestly, the best way to fix this would be to replace it. The second best is if you had a lathe where you go here and clean up these contacts a little bit. But I don't have one. So... I can cry about what I don't have, or I can just make do with what I have. And it's better to go ahead and make do with what you got. Now, if you're new to this channel, I'm going to do a lot of different things. Uh, Warhammer is going to be my primary focus. But if I run across something interesting like this, I'm going to show you guys. Now, there'll be some mechanics that some of the stuff I do they won't agree with, some won't. But... This is just years of experience and what I have found to be my best practice. So I've gotten that to a point where I think it's just not going to get any better. I mean, not without some real... You know, i got a few parts that look pretty good. Let's clean that up a little bit. See, that right there is what I'm aiming for. That looks 100% better. These parts are still a little bit rough, but kind of what you have to expect something this old now there is a place that you can get parts from if you're looking for parts for an old tractor this place is called greens auto salvage and it's located in fremont north carolina now they don't have a website per se what you have to do is you have to call them and they have tractor parts from just about every time there's three or four olivers out there and they can ship them to you now i'm gonna tell you you're gonna pay for that part especially if it's an old tractor it's this you know you, there it's not gonna be you pulling prices but if you're trying to restore a tractor and you want to use original parts that's the place now there if you're out west i know there's some places out here but on the east coast i can tell you um, Greens has just about everything you could want. But, you know, keep cleaning this stuff up to your satisfaction. And I said, if you've got mechanical experience, you'll be able to say, yeah, that's good enough. I mean, if that's not going to work, it's not going to work. But me, I want to do the absolute best I can. Because honestly, I don't want to have to pull this thing apart again. If I have to, I have to. Now, but you'll get to a point. See, I, I'm pretty happy with most of that. There's a couple bad spots here. Yeah, honestly, I just want to clean them up. OCD right there. Mm. 
Now, do you know the good thing about doing this stuff yourself, guys? You're patient. You can take your mind off whatever's going on with you in the world, especially right now with inflation. God knows. I stopped at a local Lowe's, and we recently purchased this house, and I rewired the house myself. And instead of putting 14G, which is your standard electrical wire, I put 12 to. Now, the reason I did that is because I'm old enough to see how things have changed. Uh, this house actually had uh, asbestos wiring in it, and I pulled all that out. But years ago, putting 14 to you in was fine. But with the way computers are changing, entertainment centers are changing, gaming systems are changing, they, just, they need more and more power. So once you're just better off to go ahead and put the higher grade wire in there. Now, when I did that, I went ahead and put 20 amps in my fuse box. Now, I didn't overload the box. Uh, it was also put in there. I had 200 amps put on the inside and the outside for that main reason. Uh, you don't want to overload it, which you shouldn't. I mean, right now, um, you shouldn't overload it. But anyways, what I was saying, when I was buying that wire, it was $153 a roll for 250 foot. When I stopped in there uh, about two days ago, it was $283 for the same roll, 250 foot, 12 2 And I, I mean, sometimes what you need to do to get your mind off stuff is just get out there in the shop and do something. Clean up something. Maybe you're a shade tree mechanic and this is your business. If it is, that's great. If you're doing this to save money, that's great too. And I'll tell you something else about most of these starters. Almost all of them are built the same. Uh, they're basically electric motors. It, there's not much that's going to change in between them. Uh, with this particular starter, this is the piece that you won't find in your regular car. And what that does is when the solenoid switch hits, hits it draws it up. That's, that's what happened. The solenoid switch engages. This will turn and start your tractor. And then it disengages. It's supposed to. If everything's running correctly. Like I said, guys, this right here, I'm hoping... I would really like to have it real, real clean. But the reality is, it's just not going to happen. Not with all this pity. Not with what I have on me, and I just, I'm not going to run anywhere and grab a tool, a big buy one. But I will go look for it. I had one out there in the shop. Guys, I was able to find one of my little brushes. And I'm hoping this little brush might do a little better. But, if it doesn't, it doesn't. You know, at some point in time, I'm just going to have to admit to myself... That's as good as it's going to get. Man, sometimes with this kind of old stuff, that's something in reality you have to kind of understand. Alright guys, when we get ready to put this jet together, I'm going to tell you something. Right now, I love grease. I'm going to grease it. I mean, grease it. And I know some mechanics are going to look at me going, please, Jesus, don't do that. It's just going to collect dirt and dust. But on this old equipment, I found that a lot of stuff can be solved by a good reason. <laughs> that's, that's about true in all things in life. Good reason helps everything. So, oh, man, I found that to be very true in life. Now, we've got that. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of more just to degreaser. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that a lot better. That's looking a lot better. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think one more time with that brush, I'll be able to clean out a lot of this pitting. And honestly, to a lot of people, that's acceptable. To me, it's just about acceptable. I mean, I would, if I was in a hurry, I'd have no problem slamming that in and going for it. But... I'm hoping not to have to do this again and again and again. Because the next time, like I said, 
this old boy will be had it. And I'll end up just having to replace it. Now, the reason you want these so clean, this is a contact point. That when your electrical bushings are in there, what happens is you have a positive and a negative. And that's actually what spins it. But if these are corroded, dirty, you just you won't get the contact and you will not get the turn you need. And it'll just stall it out. Sometimes with your old tractors and stuff like that, believe it or not, if you buy one and it's been sitting around, first thing you need to do is take the carburetor off. Clean it. See if it needs anything replaced in it. Take you ahead and take your starter apart. Clean it and be done with it. The alternators, I've not messed with them too much yet. But they work in general the same principle as the starter. Just a little different. And a lot of times, this old equipment, I mean, they built this mess to last. They don't build stuff like this anymore. If you give it a good cleaning, a lot of the times, it'll straighten out the problem. Now, like I said, I've got some concerns over this one. But I think this good cleaning, that'll do it. But, we'll see. I'm going to post a video. i got a video of it running. Uh, that's a strong little tractor. Let me tell you that, guys. But the killing point on that 440 uh, was... It was not a true backhoe. Because the backhoe part of it is not actually permanently attached to the tractor. Neither is the loader. Uh, it was sold in a package deal. And instead of just buying this package deal, people just went for the old bobcat or um, an actual backhoe. So this thing, it just didn't sell. I think if it had had a live PTO shaft on it, I think it would have done better. But they just didn't put one in for whatever reason. With a live PTO shaft, you could have dropped the backhoe portion of it and then used it as a regular old farm tractor pulling discs or a bush hog or maybe a seed spreader but they chose not to and when you make poor decisions like that I mean I think what was happening in their minds was back in the 70s you see there was a lot of 70s and 80s we had a lot of building boom I mean they were building shopping malls every time you turned around there was a new shopping mall and I think the mentality was we'll sell this purely as a construction tractor but again if you're gonna buy a backhoe buy a backhoe if you don't need a removable backhoe attachment there's no need to buy a utility tractor with removable backhoe attachment that you can't attach anything else to so that's a prime example of people thinking they know better but that's what I think the mentality was. Is, you know, during the 70s, early 80s, I, well, actually, early 60s on the, the 70s and to the late 80s, they were building, I mean, strip malls and everything everywhere. And I think that's what the mentality was. I think that tractor is based off of another tractor, and they already had it. See, I've got some concerns over that. Looks like it's warped a little bit. As long as it starts, that's all I really care about. Now, I'm sorry if I jump topics. Nobody's probably even watching this stuff. More than likely just talking to myself. But, I think that was the mentality. Because they had the tractor, a version of it, already set up. And instead of going through the track trouble of putting a new rear end in it, a new PTO shaft with a PTO shaft, shaft clutch and all that they said we'll leave this out it'll save us some money and we'll sell it as a backhoe which in all reality it's not a true backhoe now this it does have strength there's no line about that now i think this honestly is about as good as i'm going to get this thing But something just makes me keep going.
I'm not trying to get it perfect. You'll never get this thing perfect. But you can do your best. Like you should everywhere else. And your model painting. And your whatever your hobby is. I don't care what your hobby is. Always try to do your best. The only person you're trying to impress is yourself. And trust me. As old as I am. I still do things that surprise me. That's one reason you never know anybody in life. It's because not only them, oh, that's nice now, but yourself. You're always going to surprise yourself. Now, this might be outside the comfort range of some people, but just give it a shot. If you got something, well, I'll, I'll give you a piece of advice. If something's broke and you think you might be able to fix it, it's already broke. So, you, the only thing you can do is break it more. If the starter's not working, pull apart that starter. See if you can clean it up. See if you can get it back right. Because, and a lot of this stuff, sometimes that's all it is. Just a good cleaning will do it. Now, I got good spin here. So, again, I'm thinking what my problem was was dirt. I'm not trying to rip that off here. I'm just trying to... I want it clean. As clean as I can get it. I'll never have it brand new looking. But, you know. Again, do your best. Probably need to change rags. Now, right here, guys. I've got this thing. Honestly, about as good as it's going to get. It, it's not going to get any better than this. It's clean. I'm happy with that. What I'm going to do for right now is take this part and set it outside in the sun and let it dry. Now this is the outer housing. And this, like I said, if you look at these bushings here you can anybody has any kind of mechanical experience knows right now these are not from the 60s or 70s because as old as that unless this tractor was never used and uh once i show it to you you understand this 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 was used so like i said what that tells me is somebody has rebuilt this at some point in time now with these all i really want to do is try to clean them up a little bit i'm not trying to take material off I'm just trying to, to clean up the contacts. That's all I want to do. Is just clean them up. I want to make sure that I'm getting a good contact. The best contact I can get. Now that, again, you can see the pitting. I don't know if you can or not. But you can see a little bit of pitting in there. And that's from dirt, brine. Uh, that somehow is somebody, believe it or not I don't know how it happens but even as this thing's completely sealed up somehow over the years dirt and grime will get in there uh, it could have been pieces off the starter itself maybe a little chunk of metal here and there flew off got caught in there and that could be causing a lot of your problems now if I had new bushings I would put them in there but I don't. And I'm having trouble sourcing some new ones. So if anybody out there has knows where I can find these, let me know. No, Greens doesn't have... I mean, I might could go out there and get a starter. and But it's a, it's a guess. I mean, anytime you get stuff from a junkyard, it's a guess. It might be good. It might not. This is the only way you're going to know. Let's clean this up. Now, what I was talking about earlier, you know which side is, you have positive here, positive, positive, negative, negative. Now, how I know that's negative, if you try, follow that line, it connects back to the housing. Your positive lines connect back and run over here 
and that connects to your solenoid and once the solenoid engages power runs through here and it causes it to spin i'm not sure what the motion but if you've got bad contact that's going to cause some problem now if you wanted to you could these pins just pull out i mean they just there's nothing to this i don't want to pull them out unless i have to and that's a good rule of thumb in mechanics now if you look right here that's interesting there's a burn mark what that tells me is we had a problem with power now as i'm messing with this yeah man that comes from jumping and jumping and jumping and jumping and jumping and jumping that will destroy something now since i've noticed that i may pull this part apart and check it and if i've got some burnt in there and maybe some corrosion I'll probably go ahead and clean it up tighten it back down now these bushings is really what i want to hit right here and it's time to change my paper towel because the other ones just had it now again i'm not trying to take a bunch of material off these all i want to do is clean them up i want to make sure there's no corrosion on them things like that and do it the best you can now this starter is a lot different than other starters i've seen uh, and watching the videos on youtube this one is a lot different which is fine for the age of the tractor and guys if you find yourself buying rare things or stumbling into buying rare things you're going to find out something real quick rare stuff is hard to find parts for sometimes the rare stuff is not but something like this backhoe something that was not popular it was not made very long Parts for this are going to be hard to find. So if you do have one of these and you can find another one that is junked and you can get it for a decent price, and I, trust me, I, I know you old lady's going to raise hell. Why? We call them old ladies here. But uh, go ahead and get it. Because if you have a piston that breaks or manifold that breaks loose something like that you're, you're gonna play hell trying to find a new one it's better to have it if you've got the money and i understand not everybody does i mean i don't have the money and if i found one for you know 500 bucks i'd find the money somehow i mean i got two kidneys i don't need them both but you know we want to now i'm not really going to sand this the, these magnets and that's what they are is in here because there's no need I'm a bit curious about something hmm. now normally on a starter you'll see it grab hmm. I don't know how that would happen but we're just going to go ahead and clean this up because I know my other starters they're about to snatch them out of your hands but it may be because i don't have it energized it's not been energized in a little while so it, that could be a part of the problem but we'll find out now you see that rubber stopper right there that stops it from ground grounding itself out and look in here i know a few days ago when I was messing with this thing, this rubber grommet had come out. And I'm wondering if that burnt mark came from being grounded. Sorry, I was mellowing. I'm expecting to box in the models. So, you know how it goes. You're waiting on a box to come in. The mailman, you know, it's like a 12-year-old child waiting by the mailbox. Back in my day, though, I can remember G.I. Joe used to turn in the, uh, damn, neighbors is raising hell. You turn in the, uh, UPCs, and when you did, 
you'd have to send them in to Hasbro and it would take six to eight weeks for it to get there and then another six to eight weeks for your uh, toy to arrive. And I'm going to tell you what, three months, four months waiting on a G.I. Joe to come in when you're like eight or nine or seven. Boy, that was hard. Kind of reminds me of that. Every time I hear the mailman, I want to stop when I'm doing it, run out and go, oh my God, did my models come in? Wait on a Warhound to come in. We're going to clean this up. Again, I'm not trying to take material off, per se. I just want to try to clean it up the best I can. I, I don't want to... If you notice these, they'll have a curvature to them. I'm not trying to get rid of that curvature. I'm just trying to clean up the surface to make sure I've got a good contact point. Now, the good thing about these starters is they're big enough you can get your hands in. I've got another starter over here. That was from a long one. And those are, this is the one, this is actually off a motorcycle. But these are the bushings off of it. And guys, trying to do that is a pain. Uh, this one, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, this one's good. Now, see, I want you to notice that. That's not gravity, that's the magnets pulling it back in. Now, when it comes down to this starter, I mean, I'm not 100% sure. I'm not claiming to be an expert in this. Uh, so if anybody's watching this and you can tell me about if these are supposed to be magnetized or not, you might be watching this going, man, you're wasting your time. Those uh, magnets inside are busted and you're going to have to find new ones. But I'm hoping not. Sometimes that's all we got. Is a hope and a prayer to save us two or three hundred dollars. Because trust me, I, I don't want to have to tell my wife I got to go spend two or three hundred dollars on this thing. She would not be happy. But I don't know. I didn't pay but two thousand dollars for the um, backhoe, which is a good deal. Matter of fact, I may put a short of it up running. Because that seems to be the newest thing. You know, this YouTube channel, man, I'm not trying to become the Mr. Beast or the Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast or PewDiePie or anybody like that. I'm just doing it to kind of try to spread some knowledge to other people. I feel like there's a lot of young men out there that they've not had a, a father figure in their lives. And... That can be hard on a young man. And if he's sitting here working, talking a little bit, bothers you, I'm sorry. But I just think there's a lot of people out there, and I do think there's some young women out there that can benefit from learning a little bit about mechanics. I, you know, I believe anybody can turn a wrench. And more especially as a woman, you do need to know a little bit about mechanics because if you don't think there's some shots out there that won't take advantage of you, you got a different thing coming. Um, my wife took her car to get inspected one time. And they come up with all this crazy mess about, you know, this has got to be done, and we got to check the alternator, and we got to check. Uh, what, I mean, it was just the air filter as part of your safety inspection and all this kind of mess. She come home. She told them no. She come home. She brought the car home and told me what was going on. So I tell you what, I'll take care of this. So I drove up there. Manager. He thought it was her when he saw the car come back. And he was just smiling, and then he saw me get out of the car. And I saw it in his face, and I said, look, I know what you were trying to do. Man, I I, I didn't do any of that. And I said, so we got a problem here. Either you're telling me my wife's lying to me, or you're lying to me. Now, who do you think I'm going to believe? Well, it's just so happened the district manager of that place was there. And he come out to see what was going on. I told him exactly what had happened. Well, that day, I got the inspection done on the car. I got a free oil change, free air filter. They vacuumed out the car. Now, the state inspection I had to pay for. But everything else was on them. And the manager was very apologetic about it. So, if you run into that problem, ladies, where they're telling you all kinds of crazy mess, 
have your boyfriend or friend or somebody else go in there. And a lot of times, they'll change your team mighty fast. Because I'm sorry, everybody out here is trying to make a dollar now. And they don't mind being dishonest. So you want to just keep on doing your sanding a little bit at a time with these. Now, really, I'd just like to change them out and replace them, but I don't have that option. And they don't need it. Because like I said, these, you can tell, this has been rebuilt sometime in the past. Okay, so we got this cleaned up. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of degreaser. Oh, yeah, that's got a nice shine to it now. And that's what you're really looking for. You're looking at a uh, coppery color. Like a penny. If it's getting where it's looking like a penny, then you've about got it. I wish I had better lighting. Now this one needs a little more work. And I know, I mean, a lot of people are going, man, this is just, you know, why do you want to stand there for an hour and do it? And it's 200 and some odd dollars off. You'd be surprised how many mechanical problems you can fix with a little bit of patience and sandpaper. But don't forget about duct tape. Gotta have duct tape. Alright guys, I'm going to finish cleaning this up and then I'll come back. Guys, if you are doing this or something like this, when you buy your cleaning materials, your gum out, um, and your engine degreaser, stuff like that, go ahead and buy two cans and be done with it. If not, you're going to run into a mess. But I've got both these parts cleaned up now. I'm letting them sit in the sun for a little while and dry. Uh, the main part here has been sitting out in the sun. Now, some people might say, why don't you clean up all that? That's the outside part. And really, it's one of those things you can if you want to. If you've got a parts cleaner which I don't have, you can go ahead and clean that up. I mean, that's totally up to you. Uh, me personally, I know what I'm going to be doing with this machine, so I'm not worried about it. Now your spindle parts here, and that this piece that goes into your, you're on your flywheel to actually crank, it's in good shape. Uh, it's not broken, torn. It's a little worn, but that's to be expected with this kind of stuff. Now, something I'm fixing to do, which some mechanics may like, they may not. I'm going to unscrew this and pop this part off and make sure it's clean inside here. And we'll probably end up greasing it. But I'm going to pause this while I'm doing that. Now, to take this apart, all you're going to have to do is take this bolt out. And this will make it where you can just slide it in and out without a problem. Honestly, on this, it's not necessary to tear it all the way down like that everything seems to be in good shape um i probably will grease some of these parts just to be on the safe side and you'll find anytime i do mechanic work i always believe grease is your friend but i think i will go ahead and take that shaft shaft at least now these older models are generally going to be standard unless you have some new aftermarket parts sometimes they'll come with another size a metric size but generally if you're working in the old old, old american stuff it's going to be standard Now, sometimes, well, this one's not on tight at all. Sometimes they're on really tight, and you've got to bear down to get them off. But again, this one is showing me a lot of signs that it's been rebuilt at some point in time. So we're just going to go ahead and take a look and make sure. There's a nut on the other side I didn't see. So, when you run into that, what you're going to have to do is have a wrench or something 
Give me one second, let me go get this. Okay, guys, what I had to do was go get a half inch and put it on here. Now, again, this might break loose pretty easy. A lot of times you can use the part itself as a holder. And there we go. Once you get out far enough, you can kind of feel the amount of resistance you're getting. Now, make sure you keep up with all your washers, bolts, nuts. Because on this old stuff, if you lose it, well, you're in trouble. Sometimes what you're going to have to do is slip it over and tap it out. the washer and we're completely off now and here's your lift arm all this is in good shape um, I'm not worried about it and what this arm does is when it engages it'll throw your gear in place all in all I'm pretty happy with the condition of everything I wish I had a little bit more gum out but you know sometimes you just kind of have to go with what you got and which I'm fairly happy with everything everything's in good shape now let's put my dirt grime grease you can see in here the way it gets in and somehow it travels back and then you'll have a problem but go ahead and clean this out wipe it down the best you can if you used all your cleaning material and you're fastidious fastidious about cleaning this stuff just go ahead and clean it out wipe it down it doesn't have to be perfect this is this part goes back into the transmission housing so it's going to get covered in grease and grime and dirt anyway but if it makes you feel better go ahead and clean it up now now we got all this part like I said, we've inspected everything. The problem with old stuff like this is you take this housing. If you were to drop it and break it and you wanted to find an original, you would play hell to find it. These bushings in here look pretty good. I'm not concerned about them. They're not worn too badly. Everything looks to be in fairly good shape. See, there's a little bit of rust. So you can tell this thing has been sitting for a while. But I got all that cleaned up, so I'm pretty happy with that. Now, for the part that some mechanics will... They'll say that man doesn't know what he's doing. But again, I believe grease is your friend. And it will help you out more than anything. So we get everything cleaned up. I think we're pretty good here. Uh, this, the action on it is smooth. So, I'm not too terribly worried about it. Now, what I've seen some people do is they'll take these off. And go ahead and grease the whole shaft. This right here is to keep it from making a sound. Grinding sound, metal on metal. More like a clutch, really. That way when it's spinning, it comes down. It doesn't grind on this. But, like I said, I am pretty happy with this action. Now, what I'm going to do here is I like to use heavy duty grease. Uh, I use the automotive high temperature red grease. You can use whatever you have locally available. It may not be this. And if you don't have this, hey, just use what you got. Now, when it comes down to greasing these shafts, this is the way I like to do it. Because I know in time, that action will take that grease back where it needs to go. With heat, it will slide back in there. Like I said, grease to me is your friend. You don't want to over-grease it. 
just want to make sure we get a bit of action there. That's fine. Action is good on this for starter. I'm not too worried about it. I am going to put a little bit in here. If I can eliminate any problem, I'm going to. A little bit of grease is cheap and it's easy to use. And also protect the parts a little bit. This has got a little wear on it, but again, I'm not worried about it. Let's grease this up. Let's try to get a little bit in here. Again, grease is your friend. Anything we can do to smooth this action. Now, when it comes down to greasing your bushings, uh, there's different ways of doing it. I like just taking it in there and rolling it around the best I can. You might want to do it from both sides. Make sure you got some grease. Some people will pack the grease in there. Again, that's up to you. Just want to make sure I got good action. Because you don't want to build on it, rebuild one of these things or clean it up as I'm doing and then find out later on that if you just greased it a little bit better you'd have been in good shape so what we're going to do now is we're going to put this back together and all you're going to do is slide it in make sure your shaft lines up and it goes in now you got to make sure your arm is in also there we go now the bolt's a mess, you don't really have to worry about cleaning up. Again, it's all up to you, what you want to do. What you feel comfortable in doing. But that's done. That one's in there. I've got the washer in my hand. What you can do is flip it over. Make sure if it's got a washer, you put the washer back on. If you lose the washer, put another washer back on it. Those washers are there to... Benji, I mean, uh, Hercules, quit your mess. Sorry, guys, that was my dog. There's a woman that walks through the neighborhood, and, uh, he ain't gonna bother. He just likes barking. I've got nine dogs, so if I call them by different names, you have to understand that. How I got <laughs> nine dogs? Uh, I was living next to a woman that just did not, just refused to take care of her dogs. Uh, she left for two weeks. She went to Mexico, I believe it was, and left them. No food, no water. Well, she had four or five, and they were so hungry, they ripped the fence down, uh, the chain link fence, to get out. And when they got out, it's not the first time something like this had happened. And yes, I had called the animal shelter many times. Uh, they would come to my house because uh, I believe, you know, in the Bible it tells you that we were given dominion over animals. And I believe that's meant for us to take care of them, not to necessarily control them or mistreat them or anything like that. But we were given dominion, and yes, they give us food and things like that. So it's our duty, if we can, to take care of what we can. So anyways, I started taking care of them. And, long story short, they had went out and killed somebody's cats at a pound come around, and I had to help them catch them. Well, I only had one or two by then. And the dogs were so used to me, the pound, they wouldn't, the pound couldn't get a hold of them. They wouldn't come to the pound. I had to catch them. So, ended up, the pound let me adopt them. And they've been here with me ever since. Uh, the one Hercules... Uh, he was born here. Matter of fact, let me let's take a minute and go look at Hercules if he'll stand still. And there is Hercules. He's a big security cat. And then we got Aphagomon. Yes, that's from a Warhammer book. Snowball, Benji over there in the corner. Uh, piss pot somewhere around here. Piss pot! Sorry about the name, guys. We tried keeping her in the house, 
and house breaking her. But uh, and she, this dog pisses more than any dog I've ever met in my life. And one day I just kind of called her that and it kind of stuck. And this is piss pot. She's a good dog. I had to get a turtle from her. She called a turtle today. She doesn't like anything in the yard that's not supposed to be here. So, you know. But let's get back to what we're doing here. I've got those parts back together. I've got it greased. Uh, I'm going to grease it a little bit more too before I put it back together. And then I'll come back.